Samuel chapter 30, if you will, please. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Discouragement is, I think, one of our enemies' most popular way to just simply neutralize believers, to discourage us. You know, the Bible tells us that as believers, we shouldn't be ignorant of what Satan's up to. We shouldn't be ignorant of his devices, his schemes, the way he works. And all of us, as believers, face discouragement. Can you name some discouragements that maybe you have had or maybe you're having right now? All of us face discouragements. And uh, if you're not discouraged right now, cheer up. It'll come. <laughs> It's on its way. You know, there really are a lot of different reasons why believers get discouraged. But, you know, we're supposed to be able to encourage each other. It's a little difficult to encourage other people if you're discouraged yourself, isn't it? And so I want to try to encourage you out of the scriptures this afternoon. And uh, to do so, I ask you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30 because... As discouraged people, we're no good to ourselves or anyone else because what discouragement does is it creeps and takes over your entire person, the whole person. And we can see it here in the life of David. And I want to look at David and see why he became discouraged and then how he recovered from it. And so... I want to read uh, just a few verses, and then we'll pause and have a word of prayer. So I'm beginning in, in uh, verse 1, 1 Samuel 30. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth, and shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Let's pause a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for this passage of Scripture. We know that you know the condition of each one of our hearts, the condition of our lives. <clears throat> you know whether this very moment we're either encouraged or discouraged. Lord, we thank you for the lesson that we can draw here from the life of King David even before he was king we ask that you might use this portion mightily open our spiritual eyes open our hearts to receive it and Lord may we then apply the truth to our lives and find ourselves our spirits lifted and uh, our hearts encouraged in the Lord we just thank you and 
We ask this for the glory of your name because discouraged Christians are not good advertisements for your name. So Lord, let us reflect well on the great and glorious God that you are by having encouraged hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I was thinking uh, on Wednesday night I, I preached a message from the life of Elijah who was very discouraged and depressed and wanted to quit, wanted to die, actually. And uh, I titled it, Don't Quit. And I thought that that was all the encouragement messages that God wanted me to speak. But he led me to this uh, for this afternoon session. And uh, he knows why. And uh, I'm trusting that it'll be an encouragement to all of us as we look at it. But one of the first things that I would draw your attention to in the verses that we just read I think it's very clear that we have listed here some reasons, some reasons for discouragement. What was it? What were the reasons or the causes that brought David to such discouragement? Well, it's pretty obvious, but if you track it, you'll find that one of the first things that caused David's, uh, David's discouragement this seems like uh, almost a no-brainer, as they would say. But it was exhaustion. He was exhausted. He was physically tired. Where do I get that? Well, I had to go back to the previous chapter, and I find that uh, he was sent packing by a Philistine king, and so he went back with his men to the hometown that he had been given, Ziklag, and it was a three-day journey. And so he had just traveled with his men three days, just finished a three-day march, you might say. And so David and his men are totally fatigued. Their strength has to be sapped and uh, completely depleted, on empty, running on empty physically. And so discouragement really has something to do with our physical condition. You know what I always remind myself, and I want to remind you as well, that human beings are a tripartite being. That means they have three parts. We have a body. The body gets tired. That's what we're talking about here. Physical tiredness. He's exhausted. We have a spirit, which is the part of us that has direct connection with God. And then we have a soul which, uh, resides in, in which resides our mind and uh, our feelings, our ambitions, and our choices and decisions. So we're a whole person. And, a, and when you consider the fact that we are whole people, you cannot ignore the fact that the body gets tired. We're, we're physical people. And so we get exhausted, which really says something, and you might not think that this is very spiritual, but in another sense it is. It's very practical theology, as I would call it, and it's simply this. You and I, as believers, don't own our bodies. They don't belong to us. And so we have a spiritual responsibility to take care of our bodies. We really do. I was uh, with a, a few uh, men just the other day, and uh, a couple of them were, were preachers, and I couldn't help seeing it, but this one preacher friend of mine, he has a huge belly, huge belly, and uh, he's probably just a little bit younger than me, and I'm thinking, you're cutting your service time for the Lord very short if you don't take care of your body. And, and uh, there's a lot of things that I know filter into that. Uh, proper sleep, he's exhausted. Proper nourishment, food, uh, eating good stuff instead of junk food. And uh, exercise and, and so forth. But suffice it to say, discouragement the physical part has something to do with it. 
And in this case, these guys were simply exhausted. David was exhausted after a three-day march. But here's another thing. As I just read these verses for you, you, you'll find that David also, when they come back and they see what the enemy has done, how that the enemy has taken all of their family and all of their livestock, all of their belongings, and then burned the city, scorched earth, He's not only exhausted, David and, of course, his men are defeated. They're defeated. That, that's the mental uh, component in discouragement, is a defeated mentality, uh, where the mind is stressed and where you are simply devastated. There's a devastating hopelessness that invades your thinking. It's like there's no hope. This can't be fixed. Let me just suggest something that you can do there. If the mental component is a part of being discouraged, as we know it is, then shouldn't that, shouldn't that uh, prompt us to take serious this book, the Word of God, on a daily basis and absolutely saturate our thinking in this book? saturate our thinking with the Bible so that it permeates every corner of our thoughts. If you don't have the Bible to draw on, your mental stress will mentally mess you up. So he's exhausted, David. He's defeated. Here's a third thing. He's traumatized. I mean, he comes home and he sees everything's gone. His loved ones have been captured. He's emotionally drained. He's shocked at what he finds. And uh, he's broken over it. There's this overwhelming feeling of brokenness that must have rushed in to his e emotions. You know, there goes the banging again. The, the fact of the matter is simply this. That's the other part of discouragement. There is the physical. He's exhausted. There is the mental. He's defeated in his thinking. And here is the emotional, where he's emotionally drained. That feeling of, of just being overwhelmed. Here's an answer to that. Learn... Teach yourself to trust God's promises in the book, in the Bible. Learn to trust God's promises. And you know what he promises? He promises to give you strength in every situation. He promises you grace that will give you the sustenance so that you can rest in him when your world's upside down. When everything isn't going your way. When emotionally you are drained, mentally you are stressed, and physically you are tired, learn the lesson of trusting God, believing what He says, believing the simple truths that He promises in His Word, and then not just believing them, but then acting upon them, grabbing them and taking them and seizing them personally for yourself. I mean, what good is a promise of God if you don't take it? You know, what good is a, is, is a check for $1,000 that you need so desperately, but uh, it's offered to you, but you, you don't reach out and take it and cash it? Or what if you take it and you just lay it on, your, on the table or on your nightstand and you never cash it? What good does it do you? The Bible is full of of strength it's full of grace that will strengthen your heart but you got to take it personally he's traumatized he's defeated he's exhausted what i'm talking about is that this grace will enable you to rest when everything around you is anything but restful it will enable you to rest by that i mean to completely be at peace because you know God's got this. It's under His control. It's not outside of His ability. 
He's bigger than anything that we'll ever find ourselves facing. So, those are three reasons. I want to throw out one more. Not only was he exhausted, defeated, traumatized, but David was also at this point, although he had 600 men that were fighting men, that were a little army, that uh, were soldiers with him, he was, he was ostracized. He was isolated from them. So he was physically tired, he was mentally stressed, he was emotionally drained, and then he is socially cut off. He's socially cut off from these men. Look at what happened here. Notice, if you'd go with me in verse, uh, yeah, verse 5, or 6 rather. David was greatly distressed, for the people, that is his men, spake of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. And so he's ostracized from these men that were his right-hand fighting men. He's cut off from them. He has literally no human comfort whatsoever. There's no family around to reassure him it's going to be all right. His men are embittered against him. They've turned against him. They've rebelled against his leadership. And they're even threatening his life. And any one of those things could plunge a person into discouragement. What does he do? Well, the thing that really I think uh, I want you to note right now is that he immediately handled it. The difficulties that come up in our lives, whether they be circumstances that are bad or enemies that we face or frustrations that press upon us, we need to be alert to this is the means by which we can become discouraged and, uh, and recognize when the stress is building and don't wait but do something about it as soon as possible. ASAP. As soon as possible. Don't just let it build up. And that's what David did. Look at verse 6. But, here's the turning point. David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. The last phrase there of verse 6. And here we turn from the reasons for discouragement to the remedy for discouragement. And I want you to see, first of all, how David dealt with his discouragement was to take personal responsibility for it. You see that? He takes responsibility. It says that David encouraged himself. He took personal responsibility for himself and he took the initiative and he helped himself by getting into God's presence and having a connection with God. He just didn't lie there and wallow in self-pity. He didn't uh, abandon biblical thinking or trust in the Lord, but he took personal responsibility upon himself to be encouraged. And he was delivered from discouragement, and that began when he became proactive, you might say. Same thing for us. Your deliverance from discouragement isn't going to happen magically. It isn't going to happen automatically. It's going to require you to take initiative. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't wait for anyone else. He didn't wait for his family to come back and, and pat him on the back and, and try to uh, you know, build him up. And so he encouraged himself in the Lord. He took personal responsibility. And uh, that's exactly when we get encouraged, when we become proactive in this process of encouragement. You know, as a man that has done a lot of spiritual counseling over the years, I've encountered a lot of people, and some of which I really have wondered if they wanted to be discouraged because they're unwilling to take personal steps that are necessary to, to get out of discouragement. You can't get out of it 
if you're unwilling to take personal action. There are things that God's Word says that we have to do in order to be encouraged. And so the first step is he took personal responsibility. David encouraged himself, notice, in the Lord. There's the second uh, remedy. is not only responsibility, but dependency. He, courage, he, he took courage from the Lord. He turned to the Lord. He called on the Lord. Look at it uh, if, uh, in verse 8. David inquired of the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. And that pictures dependency. He prayed. Uh, perhaps as the psalmist, he quoted one of his psalms to encourage his heart. Or he claimed God's promises in the Word of God. Remember one of the greatest uh, verses along those lines in the uh, Jewish scriptures is Isaiah 40, 31. And I'm not saying that David looked to that one because that was uh, a different time period. But they that wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a great promise from God's word. Those are the kinds of things. There, you know, there are New Testament equivalent to, uh, verses to that. Like Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me, gave himself. That's the wings as eagles. It's Christ lifting you. It's his life in you. It's a dependent life. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengtheneth me. Who infuses his power in me. That's dependency. So there's responsibility. He encouraged himself. There is dependency in the Lord. He was dependent upon God. And then there's a third thing. In verse 7, David went on a visit to the priest. Abiathar, the priest. And uh, he spoke with him. I'm going to say the third part for the remedy of discouragement is not only responsibility. You take personal responsibility and dependency. You turn to God and, and uh, get his strength. But thirdly, community. What do I mean by community? He sought spiritual counsel from this priest. He sought spiritual counsel from another believer. This was a spiritual leader. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. There's protection there. And so the, the worst thing that a discouraged person can do is to withdraw from other believers. Is to miss church. Is to stay home from uh, fellowship. It's never right to do that. We're never to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The Bible says that. But especially when you're discouraged. Especially then. Because in order to get out of discouragement and to become encouraged, it requires community as well as dependency and responsibility. And there's uh, probably another thing here that I should mention as far as the remedy. It's found in verses 9 and 10. So David went. When he got the word from the Lord, yeah, go, you're going to recover all. David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and they came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind which were so faint that they couldn't go over the brook Besor. And what happened as a result of that? Wow. 
Verse 17, David smote them. That's the enemy that had, that had stolen and taken captive everything. David smote them from twilight to evening of the next day. And verse 18, David recovered all that they had carried away and he rescued his two wives. Here's another thing. This is vital, folks. Take personal responsibility if you're discouraged. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't wait for someone else to come along and encourage him. Secondly, David uh, put his dependency on the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Thirdly, David uh, knew the importance of community. He went to the priest, Abiathar, for counsel and for help. And then, fourthly, David involved himself in activity. He just didn't sit around and have a pity party. David got God's leadership when he inquired of the Lord, and he was assured of God's power as a result. And then you know what he did? He got busy. He got back to work and stayed active. He didn't quit. He... Uh, he, he got back doing what God called him to do. <clears throat> Vitally important. A remedy for discouragement. Stay active and don't quit. Stay active and don't sit on the sidelines. And what a difference David's God encounter made in his life with not only for himself but for the other men. These, as a result, he was now leading men that just a little bit ago had threatened to kill him. Now these men are all willing to die with him and for him. See the difference? David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And he got busy. And that's so important. You know, I tell people when they lose a, a a close loved one. Worst thing for you to do is just sit and think about it all the time. Get busy. Do something to serve the Lord. Do something that can get you out of the house and occupy your mind and your life in something that glorifies God. Don't sit around and just uh, stew over it and uh, think about it. Get active. What's the result? Well, I've already read the results to you in verse 9 David went he and the 600 men and uh, as a result verse 17 and 18 and even 19 they just completely were victorious again it says in verse uh, 19 and there was nothing lacking to them neither small nor great neither sons nor daughters neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them, David recovered all. That's the results. The discouraged one became the encourager. And he rallied these men. In verses 9 and 10, David, after he has had an encounter with God, he is able then to rally these 600 men. Let's go get them. Let's go get our wives, our livestock, our belongings back. Let's go defeat them. And through this personal encouragement that he experienced in the Lord, his God encounter, he's able then to stir the hearts of these other men and bring them out of despair. You know, that is supernatural. There is a supernatural strengthening of heart. There is a contagious enthusiasm uh, that uh, he has become an encourager of others. Why don't you make that your lot in life? Why don't you determine right here this afternoon that you are going to be a person that by God's grace, by God's strength, you are going to be an encourager of other people. Instead of expecting people to encourage you, why don't you ask God to make you a person that would encourage other people? I jokingly said to people, a couple of people that were leaving uh, after lunch, I said, you're discouraging me. I'm going to preach a message on 
in, uh, on the encouragement and dis discouragement to encouragement, and you're leaving. That, that's discouraging to me. Well, I mean, if I went with my flesh, it would be. But I can't live that way. I have to find my encouragement in the Lord. And that's what David, and he becomes a super encourager. Determined to be an encourager of others. That's a wonderful, wonderful ministry that any believer can have if they will take the time daily to encourage themselves in the Lord. I remember I had a pastor friend, actually he mentored me a little while when my wife and I uh, were just uh, uh, young, before we ever uh, went into full-time ministry. What he was known for, he passed away, what, last year or the year before, Ronnie? He passed away, but he was known as the kind of pastor that would call up all the other pastors. Not only did he encourage his own people, he'd call up pastors in the area, and he just would, uh, how you doing? And he'd uh, take the time to chat with them and try to encourage them as best, pray with them. He did that uh, periodically, maybe once a year. He would call me and uh, speak with me and find out how I was doing, even though we lived so hun many hundred miles away and had hadn't seen other, one another for years and years. He was an encourager. He was known for that. And so David rallied his men, but also he rescued and recovered everything. Not only did he rally his men, but led by God, he led himself and these men to a God-given victory. You know, God wants to encourage you that he might give you a spirit of victory and that you might use that spirit of victory to lift up and lead others to live a victorious Christian life. The worst advertisement for a Christian in this world is believers that are discouraged. And I'm not saying we should never get discouraged. I'm not saying that. You misunderstand me if, I, if you think I'm saying that believers should never be discouraged. I'm simply saying that we shouldn't stay in that condition. And I'm saying that we should, as David, immediately do something about it. Take personal initiative. Take responsibility to encourage ourselves in the Lord so that we don't walk around day in and day out, week after week, month after month, discouraged. Who would want to serve a God that makes his people discouraged all the time? I mean, what do we have to offer people if all we are all the time is discouraged and not encouraged? We need to learn what it is to depend upon God, to take the initiative, to seek Him, that we might have the victory of Christ in our daily life, that people might see His victory, give Him the glory, like Jesus said, glorify my Father which is in heaven. Did you know that Vince Lombardi was from Sheep's Head Bay? Yes. Some of you knew that, right? Some of you don't even know who he is. He was a famous, uh, he was a famous professional football coach. He, he, uh, before he passed away, um, he most famously coached the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, Wisconsin. He helped them to win the Super Bowl, and they were, they were not a good team at all. But he built that team there in Green Bay. He was a tremendous man. Um, he was, uh, during a practice session uh, for the Green Bay Packers, things weren't going well uh, for Vince Lombardi's team. And so he singled out one of his biggest guards because he said, you're not putting out like you should. It was a hot, muggy uh, summer day, and uh, Lombardi called the, the guard aside and he just let him have it. He said, son, you are a lousy football player. You're not putting out. He said, as a matter of fact, it's all over for you today. Go take a shower. And the, the big guard, he dropped uh, his head and he walked off the field into the dressing room.
45 minutes later, uh, Lombardi walked in the dressing room, the locker room, and he saw the guard sitting there in front of his locker, still wearing his uniform, his head was bowed, and he was quietly sobbing in, into his hands. And Lombardi, he went over to him, and he put his arm around the big guy's shoulders and said, Son, when I told you that, I told you the truth. You're a lousy football player. You're not blocking. You're not tackling. You're not putting out. However, in all fairness to you, I should have finished the story. Because inside of you, son, there's a great football player. And I just want you to know that I'm going to stick by your side until that great football player inside of you has a tra chance to come out and, and, and assert himself. Well, with those words, Jerry Kramer straightened up and he felt a great deal better. As a result, he became one of the all-time uh, guards in professional football. There is someone inside of every believer that is not a lousy Christian. He's a victorious Christian. In fact, he is the Christian. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ is in you, and He is the Christian life. And He can live that Christian life through you because He's inside of you if you will let Him. And one of the reasons why you're sitting here today and one of the reasons why I'm standing here today is because I want to stick by your side until that Christ in you comes out. And he's seen in your life. And you become a victorious Christian that brings great glory to the Lord Jesus day in and day out. I'm not saying you're perfect, but I'm saying that when you get discouraged, you, you know what to do. You know how to deal with it like David did. You know how to go to the Lord and encourage yourself in the Lord. You know how to depend upon Him. You know how to take personal responsibility and initiative and say, God, I need you right now. I need you to work in my life. I need you to give me direction. I need you to meet this need. Whatever. You know where to go. You know how to deal with it. David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. And I'm telling you, this is probably one of the lowest points in David's life ever. They wanted to kill him. They were so upset with him as their leader. But when God met with him and he got encouraged, they were willing to die for him. That's the difference. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would use this lesson from David's life to really encourage our hearts and to direct us into the, into the way of real victory. It's human for us to be discouraged. You know that, Lord. You know that about us. You know us so well. And yet, you're there. You're always there for us to pick us up, to encourage our hearts. But Lord, it doesn't happen automatically. It only happens when we, like David, take personal responsibility for ourselves and our feelings. And we take the initiative and we begin to look to you. We encourage ourselves in the Lord. We inquire of the Lord. We seek you, the Lord. And then when we have a, a close encounter with you, when we have a God encounter, when we experience the reality of your presence, it changes from discouragement to encouragement. And then, Lord, we can rally others and we can even, we can recover that which has been destroyed or taken away. We can recover through the victory that you give us in Christ. And I pray that this would be something that we would never forget. Lord, that uh, you would use it to make a big difference in the way we handle the rest of our day now in the way that we handle the things that we don't even know are coming our way in this new week that we've entered today. Lord, teach us your ways. 
Help us to walk in them. To walk with you. Release within us that perfect believer, that perfect Christian that lives in us. You yourself be seen in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I think.